there are different layers of preservation. In, like, international treaties, they create a framework in which countries are being held responsible for the preservation of their heritage within their territory or even sometimes out of, outside their territory. That's an important element, of course, that you need uh, in, in the preservation because you need to have uh, something that you can refer to. I think that's important, understanding that there are frameworks in which a, a government has said that they are committed to. At the same time, there's a practical impl implementation because you can still sign something on paper, but at the same time, its preservation is something which is more on a, on a lower regional or national, regional, even local level. Um, it's about creating policy for preservation. It's about creating domestic legislation. It's about having site holders or people trained for preservation. It's about creating awareness among uh, the people uh, around it, but also younger generations about the value of the heritage. And that's all part of this element of preservation. It's so wide, it's so broad. Um, and at the same time, all these different elements are at the end of the day important to ensure that it's being passed on to next generations. Uh, a site holder alone is sometimes not you know, in the position to ensure the preservation of a site if it is not supported by its authorities or if it's not supported um, on a higher level. And at the same time, you can create all the frameworks, but if you are lacking the local knowledge, then sometimes there's also no preservation because you need to have the traditional knowledge to understand how to properly preserve an object or a site or a an, natural. An I think that that's, it's not black and white, you need it all. Um, and it all needs to fit together in a way.